I found these beautiful interior design decor pieces on a website that I follow, and I knew that I had to recreate them. So if you wanna see how I made these, well, then follow me. What's up glue dots? I'm Elaine the Midnight Crafter and as I was saying I saw these really stunning, I thought they were stunning, decor pieces on this website which judging by how the website looks like and it's an Instagram um, website or whatever you want to call it that I follow, someone that I follow, but judging by just the classiness and the beauty of the picture, I would imagine these little guys are pretty expensive if you can even buy them. I don't know where you would buy them, but for just a few dollars, I made them and I'm so happy with the way they turned out. I love it. And I think you guys are gonna be surprised as well to see what I use to make them with. I hope you're enjoying these craft projects of mine because I try really hard to make unique things that are different and not just your cookie cutter crafts. So please let me know what you think. I'm always happy to hear from you all. Don't, don't forget to check that information box down below because there's a lot of important information down there that I don't want you to miss, including the link to win a cute little bling owl keychain. And I do that drawing the first of every month with a live chat. And I love my live chats with you guys. I cannot wait to show you these. So as soon as you hit that like button, we will get this party started. All right, so first what we're gonna do is take our cake tins and we're gonna be cutting this bottom center part out. So I'm gonna do that using a, just a box cutter and I found it's so much harder to go in this way than to just go in from the inside edge and just go around and cut until you get that whole center part cut out. Once you have some of these cut out, I'm gonna cut it in half and we're gonna start cutting our leaf shapes into it. So cutting the leaf shapes, it's actually easier to cut a piece and then cut the shape because you can maneuver it a little easier. I found it just really hard to try and get the right shape by trying to do it while it's attached to the whole thing. So decide what, how big or thin or whatever you want your leaves to be. I think I'm gonna go a little with varying sizes, but probably a little fatter of them because the more small ones we have, the closer it's gonna look to the other wreath and the more of them we're gonna need to cut. So I'm gonna go with them a little bit wider. And because we need lots of them and this is pretty thin and easy to cut, I'm gonna double up and do a couple at a time so that it saves a little bit of time. I'm trying four at a time. We'll see how that goes. That seems to work out okay. So I am, as you notice, leaving this bottom part flat. I just think it's gonna be a little easier to glue that on having a bigger base instead of... And remember your leaves all don't have to be the same. Just like in nature, leaves are all different. Just like people, we are all different. So embrace it and run with it. Now we're gonna take one of our two wreath forms and we're going to be cutting off this outer circle. So I've already done that here and I just did that using wire cutters and removed that and we're gonna be putting that aside. And then what you're going to do is take a pair of pliers and straighten out so you have these that are curved. You wanna just straighten one of them out so that it doesn't have that bend to it anymore. And then we'll be cutting off the other two with the wire cutters because we won't be needing those either. So this is what you are left with. Just your two rounds with only one little pokey doohickey sticking out and you're gonna flatten that out. So we need this little piece to attach it to our stand and to help it to stay. Otherwise it doesn't have any leverage and it will wobble. So now what we're gonna be doing is taking nautical rope and we're gonna wrap all the way around because we wanna give it some bulk so we have somewhere really to glue our leaves onto. So find a place to begin and the start is always the tricky part. You can glue the rope to itself to get you started. Otherwise, um, it's really hard to get it started and glue it to the metal frame. And then the other thing that's kind of important is to wrap your nautical rope really snug. 
When you get to the end, you want to make sure you don't wrap it so tight that you can't get to this um, little pokey doohickey thing. Cut it off and glue it to itself and then you're good to go. And for those of you that don't already know, I love using parchment paper to press things down. Um, you'll still feel the heat through the paper, but at least this way you can press it down without it sticking to anything. So it's a very, very handy tool to have. It's a great thing to work with. Now, you may not need to do this. I need to do this because of this twine that I use, but I have all these little pieces sticking out all over and I'm going to go ahead and burn those off. The first time I did this, I thought I was going to light my whole piece on fire, but it really does stop at the once it hits the uh, main part of the twine. So don't be afraid. Just make sure you're in a ventilated area. Aside, what I did now is I took my 12 inch dowel and used, I just used wire cutters and kind of scored it and scored it and scored it and then snapped it. But if you want to use a little handsaw or you have another way of cutting it, that would be great. So I'm going to now kind of start forming a little bit the base of where we're going to put this on. And for this one, I'm going to be using this little piece here. So if you don't find this or you don't have this already, you can always use the lid of a box. So I'm going to be going with this one and I'm going to take this little center piece out of here. It comes out real easily. And then I'm going to be looking on the back to find the center point. And to do that, I'm going to go crisscross corner to corner. And this will give me my intersection will be the center. Then we're going to use our drill and we're going to be drilling right here in the center, a big enough hole that will fit our dowel in. I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see I have the hole drilled. I'm going to put the side of the stick that is the little rougher edge so it goes in and then that way I have the clean edge that's staying here up at the top. And then you just want to reinforce really well the underside of this so that the stick, I mean it, the nice thing is it will go all the way down, it'll be touching so that will help add some stability but you do want to add some hot glue all around that stick so it doesn't budge and that it's firmly in place. Now, now that we have these two components, we're going to put them together. So I'm going to sort of split this so I can get to where the inside part is. You're going to put this up against the side of the dowel and then also put your dowel up in there. So it should be sort of like that. Hopefully that makes sense. And you're going to add a bunch of hot glue, but you're also going to maybe add in a little E6000 in there just to be sure that everything's going to hold. I'm going to let that cool off and then I'm going to be adding some more hot glue on this side and then I'll also be adding some on this side. I'm just going to use a bit of thread and wrap it around because I really want to try and keep this as streamlined as possible. I'm just using black thread. It doesn't matter what color you use because we are going to be spray painting this whole thing. Add your hot glue and then I just cut a piece of thread and I'm kind of just wrapping it around real snug just to give that extra little added bit of support to hold this in place. All right, now we get to kind of start doing some of the fun part and we're going to start attaching our leaves. For this, you're just going to take, you can give it a slight shape if you want to, you don't have to and start gluing on. And where you can start is right where you put that first glop of glue so we can cover up our mess down here. I'm going to go kind of all the way around and sort of overlap. I'm probably going to go backwards though so that I can overlap all the way around and then I will end with them like that. But And you don't necessarily want them to be all perfectly lined up either. And you're going to do this even all around onto the underside as well. I'm going to continue that around, sort of overlapping a bit. 
and you'll kind of get a feel for where your spacing needs to be once you get going. Now initially when I started out I was doing them really close together and overlapping but I was kind of getting the feel of more like a pineapple than I was leaves. So now I'm sort of spacing them a little more. It's okay if you look in there and you see some rope because that's really not going to show later and everything is going to get spray painted so don't worry about that. Are you guys getting value out of this? If you are, don't forget to go down and give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of this project. Make sure you're gluing them on in kind of different directions. This is where you get to be a little bit artsy and sort of play with it and give it your own style. Make sure both sides look good. Okay, now that I have it all covered, then that last thing I'm going to do is spray paint it with my metallic gold Rust-Oleum paint. If you want to, you can spray everything silver so that it kind of ties in with what you already have with the foil part but I decided I wanted to do this silver to match the one that I was trying to copy the inspiration picture. For this second wreath the leaves are going to be a little different. We're going with a sort of a smoother leaf and laid out in a different way. So all I did was took my X-Acto knife again and I cut around and removed the base part of this tin. We're going to cut leaves out of this and if we need extras we're going to use this side part of this one as well. The way I'm going to be cutting my leaves out of this one is first I'm going to be cutting some strips and they can be fairly narrow because these leaves are much narrower than the other ones. This first one's got to be a tad bit wider just because of that curve. You don't want to do it too big and waste too much of your foil because we want to be able to get as many leaves of, out of this as possible. So probably closer to three quarters of an inch. But basically what I'm going to be doing is folding it in half and in half and we're going to see if we can get four layers cut at the same time. These leaves are going to be cut kind of taller and skinnier and it's going to have a point on both ends of the leaf too. Unlike the other ones where we just had the uh, flat bottom on it. Go ahead and cut out a bunch of leaves and they're going to be this longer narrower style. So just wanted to let you know which pan I'm actually using for this. I am using the Chef Roaster slash Baker and you can see the measurements there 11 and 3 quarters by 9 and a quarter by 2 and 7 16 and I like this one a lot because the base of it is completely smooth and it makes perfect leaves. The other one we wanted textured leaves which is why we use the side of the cake pans. Now we're going to take the other wreath form that we have and you need to decide at this point which ring you want to use. So whichever ring you do decide to use you do need to make sure that it has one little of these um, support pieces, the sticking out piece attached to it. I'm going to be using the outer ring I think because I want to make this as big as I can but you can easily use any either of the other rings if you want to. So I'm going to again use my wire cutters and because I'm using the outer ring I'm going to cut closest to this point here so that I have that little piece attached to the outer ring that I need. So just a small little tip um, when you're using wire cutters or anything like that you get a lot better leverage if you put it way in there and you don't have to squeeze nearly as hard as you would as if you were trying to do it with the, the little tip part of it. Now I chose the biggest ring but these little these little pieces now are sticking inward. I need them to or at least one of them to be sticking outward because this is what we're going to be placing on top of the dowel and using as support like we did on the other one and we glued it. So just to be safe before you cut them off you're going to use a pliers. I've already done it with one but I will show you what I did and I'm placing this at the edge of my table grabbing it with the pliers and bending it. So you'll notice this has the side that it is stuck to and then the other side. You don't want to flip this piece going this way because it will break off at where the weld is. What you would want to do since this piece is here on the top you're going to bend it around from this side bending it out to the outside so that it comes around just like this. Otherwise if you try and bend it the other way it will break off. But as I said we're leaving all three of them on and bending 
um, first because in case it breaks off you still have two other options. So what I'm doing now, as I said, though this is the top side where the weld is, I'm going to grab it with my pliers, bring it to my table, and see that one broke off. So <laughs> the first one I did did not break off, so I'm so glad that I didn't cut them off. Let's try that again. So take it and bend it. There we go. So that one worked. So now you can see that one is bent. Our dowel is going to be going on just like that. So this way it has somewhere to rest in there and somewhere that you're going to be gluing and attaching with your thread again. Since I don't need to have two of those, I can go ahead and break one of them off, but I just wanted to make sure at least one of them was going to work. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for right now and we're going to work on our base. So this one I'm going to show you how to make the base with the box lid since the other one I showed you with the artwork piece. I'm going to of course take off the bow and I really like this one because it has this great texture to it so I think it's going to turn out really really cool in the long run. Then again on this one we're going to find the center point. Here at my cross point right in the center is where I'm going to make my hole just the right size to fit the dowel. What I'm actually going to do, I think, is just make a little um, crisscross cut in there so that it has a little bit of some tension. And my crisscross cut is going to be right in the exact spot where my X marks are. That's going to be where I'm going to be putting my dowel in. And again, we're going to use the not so nice side of the dowel because we want the good side to place the wreath part on. So here we get a nice snug fit. With this also, we're going to go around and add some hot glue so we don't get any movement from that. And glue it a little ways up the stick. What I'm going to be doing just for some extra support here, you do want to make sure first off that this is straight up before you start attaching any supports in here. And then I'm just going to be gluing these. These are the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue one right up next to my piece here and my other glue is still not completely dry. So I'm going to do one on each side of it just like that and then I'm going to be crisscrossing the other one in this direction. Now again this doesn't have to look pretty it's all hidden underneath. I'm going to add in some extra hot glue around where those tumbling tower pieces are attaching to the dowel and this way you'll really be sure that this thing's not going to move around or tip or eventually because the cardboard maybe gets loose that it would come out this way. It's not going anywhere. Now if you don't have the tumbling tower blocks, use maybe some stacked up craft sticks. You know, you can cut them and stack a few around and around. Just anything that's going to give it something a little more stable to hold it in place. Also at this point would be a good opportunity to maybe glue in some rocks or something to give this a little bit of weight. Now just like we did for the other one, I'm going to use my E6000 and my hot glue and I'm going to attach this to the dowel. And then I am also again going to be using some thread to really hold that in place. For right and this is how I've attached it. It's good and sturdy at this point. Now we're going to start attaching our leaves. Right, and for this perfect. we're definitely going to want to use E6000 and hot glue. And I'm going to start from the top here and I want it to look as though it's two branches that are coming together. So I'm going to put my leaves following the curvature of the wreath form here and I'm going to put them so two of them come to meet each other right in the middle. So I'm also going to use the hot glue which is definitely not the permanent hold in this DIY but it is what you're going to need to just get it to hold in place initially while you're wanting the E6000 to dry. The next pieces that we're going to place on, the next leaves, are going to be kind of branching out like this and like this. So we're starting to really get our wreath form shape. This one you're not going to have as much space to use because we're just pretty much overlapping the tip. So we're going to put a dot of our E6000 there and a little dot next to it of our hot glue. 
The 6000 is really the heavy hitter in this though. Okay, we're going to put that there. And then slightly overlapping on that, put your E6000 and take your next leaf. Tiny bit of hot glue on there. Then we're going to be going through and adding on more of our leaves. And we're going to leave a space and then add two more leaves. And then a space and add two more leaves. So this is the look we're going for for this one. Almost like a Julius Caesar crown type of a thing. So we're gonna go all the way around and do that on both sides. And then, so as I'm working on this, I'm actually finding that the hot glue is just not a good option. Um, it's just a bit too difficult and too much glue and too messy. So I'm just doing one little dot of glue on the ring itself and then one on the base of the bottom of the next leaf and gluing that on top. And then I have to leave this laying down flat overnight to dry because if I lift it, of course, without the hot glue, these are all gonna fall off. Now, when you get down to this very bottom part where we're wanting to cover up all this mess, you're definitely gonna wanna use your hot glue as well because just the way this sits, it's really hard to get it to stay in place while it's drying. So you will wanna use both. And so that's our transition point. You have two coming down almost like the tails of a bow. And then we're gonna start again with our pattern over here and the same way, and then finish it out and come around. So a little tip for you that helped me to speed up the process was to put um, the dot of glue on the ring and then do a few of them, maybe like four at a time. That way, glue, 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 leaf, 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 leaf and then glue, 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 and leaf, 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 leaf. So anyway, hopefully that'll help to speed it up. I have to let this dry uh, at least for a few hours and then I'm gonna get it spray painted and show you. Did you guys hit that like button yet? Please share this with your friends. If you're enjoying my channel, sharing it is the best thing you can do to help me out. Okay, let's check it out pretty soon here. Oh, and one other thing, on the other wreath, I spray painted it gold, and I felt like the gold was a bit bright, so then I just took silver spray paint and gave it a very light couple of mists just to kind of subdue that flashiness of the gold and give it a little bit of variance in the color. So I'll probably do the same thing with this one. Anyway, let's check these out.